Greek creation story animated. From chaos, everything. The ancient Greeks believed that in the beginning there was nothing but absolute chaos. This being was all there was and all there had ever been. That was until chaos actualized entities called the primordials. These were Mother Earth, Gaia, the Underworld, Tartarus, the Night, Nyx, the Dark, Erebus and Desire, Eros. But that was not all. These beings also went on to sire other primordials, namely the mountains, Orea, the sea, Pontus, the day, Hermea, and the air, Aether. Gaia also created the sky, Uranus. Together they made the one dozen titans, the Cyclopes, and the hundred-handed Hecatonchires. Uranus the Hateful Uranus despised his creations, so much so he buried them deep within Gaia. But this action, spectators of myth, was to be his doom. Angry, Gaia produced an adamantine sickle and beckoned her children to take Uranus out. Only Kronos stepped forward. Gaia concealed Kronos and he lay in wait for Uranus to come. When he eventually arrived, Kronos sprang forth and used the sickle to neuter Uranus. Kronos was now master and commander of everything, but even this titan's kingship would have its limits. Gaia foretold that Kronos too would meet his doom by the hands of his own. The Rise of Zeus Kronos, like his father before him, despised his children. However, that was to be the titan's downfall. The problem for him, however, was that his offspring were the gods of Mount Olympus, Remembering the prophecy from Gaia that a child of him would usurp him, Kronos devoured them all, except one, Zeus. Zeus was hidden on Crete. In his place, Kronos was fooled into eating a stone in the guise of a baby. The thunder gods soon managed to free his Olympian brothers and sisters, as well as the Hecatonchires and the Cyclops. Together, they made weapons and planned for war against Kronos and the Titans. The war would last 10 years. It was called the Titanomachy, and the Titans eventually lost. Kronos was imprisoned in the underworld. Zeus was the victor. He was now master of the sky, as well as the very air we breathe. Poseidon, meanwhile, held dominion over the oceans, and Hades took over the realm of the dead. But Zeus was overlord of all. After a time, the Titan Prometheus stole fire from Olympus and gave it to humanity. This made Zeus livid, and he punished Prometheus. The king of Olympus had him tied to a rock in a far-off place where, for all eternity, his innards would be eaten every day by an eagle. They'd regenerate overnight, only for it to happen again the next day, and the next, and the next. Zeus's problems weren't over yet. No, Mythstorians, for soon a beast had been set loose upon Mount Olympus and like a rabid dog had decimated all who stood against it. Zeus versus the Typhon This was the Typhon, perhaps the strongest of all mythical Greek creatures. Both gods and men fell in the battle against it. All but one remained. Zeus was mad. Zeus showed the Typhon no mercy. He battled the beast to a standstill and with a throw of his mighty thunderbolt, the battle was won. But to ensure the monster stayed kaput, Zeus slammed a mountain upon it. That, some say, was Mount Etna, and it's where some reckon the Typhon still lays underneath to this day. If Zeus had not acted as humanity's and Olympus's protector on that day, it is said that Typhon would have become the ruler of the cosmos. But there's still so much more to explore, and even more to find out, so why not join us in the next mythical video?